So, to get uh, Samplitude to work, uh, you need an interface to plug in. <laughs> so, if you are doing vocals or plugging in an amp, go ahead and get an interface like this. Um, this one's a Behringer. has a USB port. Um, USB input, uh, output, input? Yeah, output. It's an output? Output, yes. And that's, okay. And, <laughs> and you got to plug that thing in. And uh, when you do, it goes doink. Dee doo. <laughs> dee doo. Dee doo. All right. Let's get over here. So, in order to see this device, go here in the corner. See that, Dwayne? It says speakers. Right click. And he, <laughs> Dwayne knows all this stuff. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, treat me like a baby. That's okay. Let's start at step one, okay? <laughs> and if you don't see, well, in this case, it's called a two USB audio codec. Uh, it's actually a Zenith, Zenith 302 USB. In this case, it's showing it as a two USB audio codec. Why is that? Oh. Anyways, if it's not there, right click in here and show disabled devices. Because if it's not showing up in here and you know that you plugged it in and did the doo doo or whatever kind of noise that your computer makes, um, it should be in there. So click on that. The little green check mark in here means default. So. I've had this installed before, and it had I had uh, made it default. Windows many times, or seven anyway, will will run to uh, uh, um, a new device that's plugged in uh, automatically. Oh, okay. But not always. So if you're not getting anything, follow Rick's instructions, and you'll get there. All right. So we know that this <coughs> microphone is. I, it's not a microphone, it's actually a interface. Uh, in this case, you can stick in RCAs, you can stick in a XLR, or, and you can also stick in a uh, quarter inch. And, oh, and it does have a uh, one eighth jack as well. And it also... Um, has the capability of being a monitor so you can plug in like a headset or you can plug in speakers and that comes out but you'll see how this uh, shows up in magic's uh, samplitude when uh, we get there so we're gonna try and make this really short and uh, and just cover the basics of this and getting it in so I say okay how cool is it to have your own portable little Recording studio, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you need that if you if you're gonna be, you know, uh, recording whatever vocals. Uh, you want to plug in your mic in here. If you uh, want to record your guitar, you can you can uh, line in into here if you want to do it that way, or you can put a mic on there and mic your amp if that's the way you do it. Does it have different impedance, or like, do you have to switch to you know, <coughs> mics and instruments have different impedance? So, right, if you're using a microphone, you want the phantom power, and this has the phantom power in it. If you're using a uh, line out from your amp, then it should suffice just as is. You right. won't, won't have to have any phantom power or anything like that. So this is cool. It has like an EQ in it. It was really cheap. So, and it works pretty good. So once we're in here, I'm not going to open up any project video or anything like that. I'm just going to go right to the uh, interface here. Now, um, <clears throat> you'll see this come right up, uh, this easy setup. And this, of course, is after the splash screen that, you know, tells you you can download a whole bunch of st extra stuff. Um, but right now we're just getting into how to get this thing to function uh, in the uh, in the Samplitude. So you can see that we've got a few choices here of the sound card driver. And because we have this device plugged in, it's given us this option here as a two USB audio codec. 
and uh, also it has it here in the MME driver settings as well. So I usually put it in an MME uh, to start, although... Why? Because it, right now it's my only solution. However, later on you'll see a WMD, so I'll switch to oh, that. Okay. So Because it performs better on my computer, although it doesn't come up right away. So you'll notice things that may come up and may not come up right away. Here uh, we've got uh, our choice of either using our... Uh, speakers or uh, our real tech which is on the laptop here speakers over here I think we have a um, uh, something that needs to be updated because I could never get the audio input and output to work on this simplified easy s setup mm -hmm. screen so I always go to advanced even though there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here on this interface go to advanced because it it will it will help you if you lose this screen if you go oops it's gone hit the Y button, I love uh, that button. on the key and uh, on your keyboard and Y will always get you to figure out why things are not happening or are happening so you can see right now I have WDM here as a as a choice I'm gonna keep it on MME because sometimes if you're in a particular driver it won't show up certain things even though you've have them plugged in so I'll show you how to rectify that because that will happen from time to time even on uh, yeah. other softwares so here we go we have a microphone uh, in our audio devices for recording and for playback we have the speaker selections here now you can switch off the one if you're not if I'm not going to be using the uh, speakers out of this then you may as well just click it off like I've done here and keep the speakers on the real tech going if that's what you're going to use and over here uh, you can click both of these so that they show up as options in the tracks later on so uh, MIDI, we don't have anything set up in MIDI. Uh, if you do have something like a keyboard, uh, they usually have like an already established USB out from the, the keyboard. Or you can go ahead and get yourself a uh, um, an M Audio Uno or something of that sort of device where you plug it in and it's got the, uh, uh, the ends on it that have the... Uh, that have the MIDI cables on them and uh, the other end will have the USB so you can plug that in and, and uh, usually Windows 7 will will uh, or higher will recognize it right away that's for a tone generator right? <clears throat> that's for like it, well yeah you can use it for a tone generator if you're going in and out right. through the MIDI cables but if you are just using it as a controller then you just go through. I believe it's the MIDI out, but it'll tell you that on your on your keyboard. So, okay. Uh, hardware controllers, uh, nothing that you really gotta uh, you, that you have to be concerned about here. Metronome. Uh, this will you know the, for the little beat meter. So um, if you want to change the tone on this. If you want, say, the first beat of the uh, of of your of your metronome to be a kick drum, and the rest of them what snares yeah, or whatever, matter, yeah. then then you can do this in here, and you can change the volume, and you can change the you know the device uh, which the uh, metronome is based on. Say, for example, you only want the metronome to come through this, then you would make sure that you'd enable this one because it has the speakers coming out and then you would select it to be speakers out on here. In this case it's either stereo master which is like the default or you can just say speakers the real tech which is on this laptop here. Um, let's see other than that yeah um, to find your if you have a, a kick drum or something else that you want or you want a ping going on here and tick 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 going on for the rest of the beats and you can you can pick whatever kind of noises you want you can even whatever you know, is familiar whatever you, you will work will work for you uh recording here on this uh 
I'm going to record in 24-bit. That's especially useful when you're recording loud guitars through a microphone. Or if I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> then it gives you lots of headroom. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll you'll hit the levels too high, and it'll it'll distort before you get a chance to actually work on it in the uh, interface. So you don't want it to distort. Put it to 24 bit because most of our computers these days can can handle it and have the uh, hard drive capacity to uh, to record in that um, playback we'll go over here and uh, ch -ch -ch anything here that anybody should be concerned about the global play device yeah make sure that's on your speakers or whatever device if you're using this for example uh, I, if I was using this as as my monitor out then I would designate that it's it's entirely up to you. It's however you have your 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 home studio set it's up and, what and you want. yeah, it's all in there. So go to the general programs here. Now what we'll do is we'll cut to make these uh, uh, sessions short and easy for people to digest. We'll go into this in the next episode. So see you there.